Hello, this is Renee Esquivel, and you're watching uh, my latest video on my YouTube channel, Technologist on the Go. Uh, kicking off a, uh, a series of videos about getting the most out of your Mac Mini M1. Uh, for me, as, a, uh, as an independent IT field engineer, I am increasing in, in the number of times I need to access something off that Mac Mini M1 not related to any job I'm performing in that moment. So it's not business related in that regard, but it is information that I might need, especially when I have longer assignments where I frankly have time to kill. And so accessing something off that Mac Mini M1 would be useful. And there's a number of uh, remote access uh, applications out there, but the one that I've been using for years that is the most reliable is TeamViewer. It's the fastest, has the best quality, it's the easiest to use. And when I have clients that use that, I know we're going to be working just fine. Uh, if we, When I do other types, any desk, or I go through WebEx and such, oh my word, Cisco WebEx, uh, I prefer TeamViewer. Okay, so um, let me show you how to a set up remote access so that when you're on the go, whether you have your iPhone or or your iPad or a MacBook uh, Air, MacBook Pro, or even a Windows phone, uh, uh, Android phone, or a Win or Android tablet or a Windows computer, you can access your Mac Mini M1 uh, remotely. We well, can access anything that is running TeamViewer <laughs> remotely, but this is all from the perspective of the Mac Mini M1. So let's get right into it and uh, and you'll, you'll see what, I, what I'm able to do and hopefully it'll help you. Okay, um, I pull up the spotlight search. I'm gonna go in, type download TeamViewer, um, and then I'll do a command B to go search right off the internet from that. Um, there's a link there for download TeamViewer. Uh, for whatever reason, I fiddled a little bit here in, in the Windows. I didn't need to. I could have just clicked on Mac and should have. So you'll see me do that in just a moment. Uh, there, there we go. And, uh, and then of course, download, um, the TeamViewer installer. Now, um, when you install TeamViewer, you will be prompted as to whether or not you're going to use it for personal use or professional use. Uh, if, if you're needing it for a business-related thing, just understand the licensing is exorbitant. But as long as you're doing, you intend to use it just for personal use, then then you then click on that by all means, and uh, and that's free. And that's a, uh, you'll get to use it as long as they allow it for um, without charge. Okay, so I went ahead and I'm, I'm accepting the prompts there and I'm installing this. And uh, it's not a very large application at all. Um, and in your case, you all have to go into the preferences and enable certain things. It'll tell you, just like with any app that has uh, security preferences that need to be enabled, it'll tell you which ones they are. It didn't do it here in this demonstration because I've already done this. Okay, um, now uh, I'm logging in with my TeamViewer login and password. You would click create my account and, and set that up. Now, uh, remote control, that's the, the ID and password you would use if you were granting somebody else remote access into your system on a single use basis. In this case, I'm clicking on Start Team Viewer with the system because I want it to start up with every uh, reboot and, and also clicking Easy Access, which will allow uh, a, a, a more expedited uh, remote access. Um, I'm just going through some of the settings here so you can see them, but those two that I checked are important. Um, I'm also scrolling down here to make see that I've granted uh, full access. Uh, there's three areas down there uh, where that needs to be set. 
the main thing I'll be coming back to is there in the section you see for personal password. That's where you will um, set up that password that uh, allows for the easy access, uh, empowers that so that you can go ahead and and a remote access from any computer that you previously authorized. It's not like you know, any just anybody could uh, can can jump on. Okay, so um, now uh, you can see that I have my Mac Mini um, ready. Now, I'm, I switched over to my iPad. That's where you're going to see me do the remote access uh, using TeamViewer because it does run on the iPad OS as well. Um, I'm clicking remote control using password. That's why I'm not going to do that. Now, this is under fair use, okay? In all fairness, this is the day that uh, rocker Jerry Lee Lewis passed away. And so I was listening to some of his music, his 1964 Hamburg concert. Phenomenal. Okay, um, but now uh, I'm, I'm back to simply demonstrating remote access. Um, and here you could see me with the iPad uh, side by side to the uh, Mac Mini M1 and... Uh, Using the Apple Pencil, of course, I'm uh, moving that window around the screen there, just showing you that how that remote access works. Now you see I have a USB-C to HDMI adapter, and that's what I'm actually now using for the HDMI display into my monitor. I'll show you why in a moment. Uh, the Mac Mini M1 uh, does uh, I it does go to sleep. Um, after I think I have it set for 20 minutes. The problem I was having though is it wouldn't come out of that um, sleep mode. Not unless I was physically beside it to tap on the keyboard and have it do that, but it wouldn't respond or wake up getting a you know, network signal coming in, uh, which is how it will be when I'm using TeamViewer. Uh, and I did research, I tried a number of things, I double checked my settings, and as it turns out, it's, it's whether it's called a bug, it's a bug. Uh, with the uh, Apple Silicone, it, it, with the HDMI, if you're using the native HDMI port on your Mac Mini M1, it won't allow ne a network signal to wake it up. But... Oddly enough, if you use a USB-C to HDMI adapter or USB-C to any other type, you know, VGA or DisplayPort um, or DVI, it will. And so I took one uh, adapter that I use, and I'll post a link to it in my uh, description. And uh, But using that USB-C port uh, for my HDMI signal, that works just fine. And that is what allows me to remote in. And it is wonderful when I'm, it can be 40 miles away or even further, and I can access this Apple Silicone easily uh, with TeamViewer. Uh, and uh, the Mac Mini M1 wakes up as it's supposed to when the incoming network traffic arrives. Okay, so um, there you have it. I, I think that, There'll be many of you that once you try this, you'll start to see the, the realm of possibilities, things that you can do that you just kind of accepted that you couldn't do remotely. Well, now you will be able to access this powerful machine and you'll be able to do it from your phone even if you need to. Not as easily as using an iPad or another laptop or um, computer from some other location, but you can. And that's the thing you can. Uh, and this is all about getting the most out of this Apple Silicone, right? Okay, so um, please give me the like and subscribe. And uh, and, and I will counter subscribe so that we help each other out, right? And so you have a nice day. And thank you very much for watching.